I'm Jim Kircher, and as we start off a new year, we thought we'd take a little time to look back at a few things that happened in 2018. Certainly one of the big ones was the grand reopening of the Gateway Arch. All new landscaping, a great new entrance facing downtown, drawing people into a new modern interactive museum. With all the celebration of the improvements, what we really wanted to do was tell the story of something that's stood the test of time. Because this one-of-a-kind monument needed a one-of-a-kind transportation system. People don't just come to look at the arch. If they're up for it, they want to get to the top. And while we have Eero Sarnen to thank for the magnificent design of the Gateway Arch, when it came to getting people to the top, he had no idea, not a clue. Yes, it's Eero Saarinen's arch, but this tram, this is Dick Bowser's tram. Eero Saarinen worked and reworked his design for the monument on the St. Louis Riverfront, and always part of his plan was for some sort of observation deck at the top. But on one of his early drawings, all he had was a door on the lower level, simply marked elevator. No one knew how, you know, the Saarinen firm had contacted engineers, they'd contacted all the major elevator companies. The elevator companies wanted nothing to do with it. The job of designing a unique transport system for a unique building would fall to a guy who was at the right place at the right time. The place was Moline, Illinois in 1960. An executive at an elevator company there had just turned down Saarinen and the Arch Project when in walked a friend of his named Dick Bowser. And when he walked in the door, his friend pointed his finger at him and said, I didn't even think of you. Park Service historian Bob Moore heard the story he from Dick Bowser himself. The friend dialed the Saarinen firm, and when they got someone on the phone and put Dick on the phone, the first question they asked him was, can an elevator go around a curve? That was the big stumbling block, you know, to trying to figure this out. Bowser was an elevator guy, but not your run-of-the-mill elevator guy. He and his father were in the mechanical parking garage business. Instead of ramps, their Bowser system garages moved cars on elevators, up and down, horizontally, diagonally. Yes, Bowser said, what Saren had wanted was possible. And after thinking about it for a while, he agreed to give it a shot. So he had a two-week deadline to come up with two weeks. a concept, two wow. weeks. And he went back home, worked in his basement, worked almost, you know, 18, 20 hours a day, his wife feeding him coffee and uh, just um, going on pure adrenaline. And he went through a lot of mental gymnastics to try to come up with something that what might be workable. So this is, uh, Jen, this is all the oversight? Okay. Dick Bowser's sketches and diagrams, his notes and calculations, they're in big file folders in the archives in the old courthouse. And you can see Bowser trying out ideas and rejecting them. There were only a few criteria that had to be met. One was the system could not distort the exterior of the Gateway Arch. The other was that it had to be able to move thousands of people in an eight-hour period. And as Dick Bowser sat at his drafting table, he literally spelled out the problem. Ideas that were okay for loading were bad for viewing. Others were bad for loading, but okay for viewing. His goal, a system okay to load, okay for viewing. So these are showing when he was doing multiple elevators. Of course, the first option was an elevator, but a traditional elevator only goes up about 300 feet before the curve gets in the way. In fact, there is a service elevator that gets about that far. People could transfer to a second angled elevator halfway up, but you'd need equipment there and an observation deck for people waiting to transfer. And adding windows, by the way, was not the deal breaker. The real problem was the second elevator would have to be smaller, carry fewer people, and that would mean a bottleneck. You know, you've still got to have them waiting around and they're kind of building up in these, these observation yeah. rooms. Bowser's conclusion about standard elevators, impractical. He considered a series of escalators, but he would need too many and a price too big. This is the Ferris wheel concept, and you can see people riding in the chairs. 
he started working out a system that would provide a continuous ride up and down and under the arch. People would be on Ferris wheel style seats. But he immediately saw a problem there, jotting down this note. The free swinging feature would be a temptation to daredevils. He started working on different enclosed seating compartments that could carry a number of people, and you begin to see the emergence of the pod concept. And instead of spacing the seats continuously, like on a Ferris wheel or a ski lift, he started grouping together the seats, here in five different sections. At the bottom, one group would be loading, one group would be unloading. At the top, one group would be enjoying the view through windows but two groups would be stopped halfway up and halfway down. To keep people from being claustrophobic, they would actually put windows in the leg of the arch at the two points where hmm. people would stop midway uh, in the leg. So well, that sort of messes with Saarinen's beautiful concept, though. Isn't <laughs> well, it, it did, and, and there were a lot of things that uh, are surprising to us today that they were considering. Um, there was a bubble top at one time that looked like a Canadian Pacific train. Um, there were all different things that were being considered. The arch itself was still in flux at the time. In his Ferris wheel system sketch, there's a single motor driving the entire operation, and Bowser figured chains or cables would have to be a half mile long, too long to be practical. Plus, this conveyance would have to be centered inside the arch, so that when it got to the top, there wouldn't be any room for equipment or emergency stairways. At first, he was using the whole triangle right. of the arch. Which gets smaller and smaller as you go up. So right. That's something he has. But that was one of the biggest things that, during that two-week period, Dick was wrestling with, was, you know, everything that he tried to put into the leg of the arch by the time it got to the top, it was too big. Yeah, what, yeah. So his eureka moment was, I've got to design something that fits at the top and have it come down. Bowser's solution combined the Ferris wheel and elevator. It would have rotating seats like a Ferris wheel, but they would be inside these circular pods, and those would do the rotating within a fixed ring. The rings would run on curving rails with cables and counterweights like a traditional elevator and this wouldn't be a continuous circular ride. Separate trams would run up and down each leg, at the top stopping just short with steps leading to an observation deck. This was the idea Dick Bowser brought to Aero Saarinen. At the end of this two weeks, he came up with the concept that we currently use in the arch to take people to the top. Welcome to the top, the next chair card, no. And the other thing that he did that the architecture firm and the designers loved was he decided that because of the general size he was getting with this capsule, he could make it so that he would only utilize half of the triangle inside the arch. So that allowed space for an emergency stairwell, uh, all of the infrastructure, whether it be, you know, the electrical or whatever else, could go on the other side of the triangle. So this was all done in a 14-day period. Well, um, we're not talking about a big engineering firm. No, we're, we're talking, talking about one, one man. Guy. One man. After the initial concept was approved, there had to be some changes. Bowser originally had 10 cars on every tram, and each capsule only sat four people. But he had to decrease the number of cars, he had to squeeze in one extra seat, and you can blame Aero Saarinen for that. What happened was Saarinen changed the shape of the arch. The arch legs originally had been further apart. Saarinen pulled them closer together, but that made for an even tighter curve at the top, and Bowser's stairs now interfered with the end of the 10-car tram. So they could only fit eight at the top. To keep each tram carrying 40 people, Bowser had to now arrange seats to accommodate five butts and 10 knees. And now the question was efficiency. Could people squeeze in and out fast enough for these trams to move enough people per hour? There were some things that didn't uh, work quite right that needed to be ironed out. And so 
they decided to hire Dick and bring him in uh, as, just as a full-time employee so that he could be here standing by and could make sure everything was working properly. Dick Bowser died in 2003 at the age of 82, and he is honored at the Arch if you look for him. When they put up the mural called The Builders, there along with Saarinen, Luther Lee Smith, Mayors Dickman and Tucker, U.S. Representative Lenore K. Sullivan, and others, is Richard Bowser. He's a very humble kind of guy, and he didn't want to toot his own horn too much, but you could tell how um, amazingly uh, proud he was of his achievement. And, uh, you know, I, one of the most memorable times I remember with Dick was when his uh, destroyer crew had a reunion here in St. Louis. And he was able to bring them down to the arch and we took them all up. And he could open the panels and show them all the different things that he had uh, invented that made this work. Uh, he was, it was a very happy day for him.